You want to buy a schoolie, eh? <laughs> Let me tell you about it. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to Build the Best Nation with your host, Jessica Brooks. So, today I'm going to be going over how to buy a bus. Let's get to it. Guten Morgen, lovelies. Good morning. I hope you're having a great day so far. I know I am. It is beautiful outside, as you can see. The cicadas are singing. It's a good day. So I hope we can spend some time together. I really want to go over how I bought my bus with you. So go ahead and pull up a chair, grab a snack, and let's spend some quality time together. <laughs> Welcome to Build the Bus Nation. <laughs> All right, so as you may already know, I purchased a micro bus. Yes, that's what it's called. It's a Blue Bird 2004 Chevy Express 3500 6.5 V diesel engine. I know, mouthful. You'll get used to it when you get your bus. First things first, where do you buy a bus? Now you can go to your typical dealership and buy it straight off of the lot, or alternatives may include Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, Leco Offer Up, looking around your local area. There's just so many different ways you can go about it. But I would highly suggest looking into other states as well, just to broaden your options. That's what I personally did. As far as pricing goes, typically buses range between the $2,500 to $7,000 marker. Now it can obviously go above that, but that's typically where I saw the buses that I wanted, that I was interested in, listed as. My platform of choice was eBay. I was able to find the bus that I wanted and the price range that I wanted, and it was up for bid. Place your bid at the very last second. That is some advice that I would like to give you to better your chances of winning, like I did. The very first thing I did was call my insurance company and let them know that I was purchasing a bus out of state and I needed to have insurance to get back home. They asked me what kind of vehicle it was. I told them it was a commercial vehicle that was going to be renovated into a motorhome. Stop! They had no idea what I was talking about. I wanna let you guys know this so it won't be as frustrating when you start talking to insurance companies. They are very confused about this concept. It's because they don't know what exactly they're insuring. So they're a little skeptical and they're a little less likely to help you out when you mention that it's going to be converted. So keep it easy on them, make it simple on yourself and just let them know it's going to be a commercial vehicle for now. And that's all they need to know. Insure it as a commercial vehicle first then later you can go ahead and switch it to RV. Next was inspecting the vehicle. I flew out to New Jersey, looked at the lot, and I saw all these buses. It was so cool. Then I found my bus, number 29, and I went ahead and looked for certain things. You want to make sure that there is no rust underneath the belly of the bus. I literally got on the ground, looked underneath, and made sure it was clean as a whistle, which it was. When you get to your demolition phase, that'll be important and very detrimental to the actual building process if you have huge holes and gaps of rust in your bus floor. That is huge, you'll be walking on that constantly. So really take the time to inspect everything, like the rust, the tires, lifting up the hood underneath. They told me at the lot, I did not have any leaks or any major issues at all with the bus. When I got back to Atlanta, a friend of mine looked around the bus for probably two minutes and already found an oil leak underneath. That is now causing me a little bit of pain and a little bit of wallet stress. So I just wanna let you guys know that so you are informed when you are going about this process. I did buy the bus as is, so it is no longer their problem. It now falls onto me, but I'm gonna say this in confidence, this bus actually doesn't seem to have that big of a problem. It's a very minor oil leak in my opinion. The drive back was about 16 hours, including rest stops and the actual speed that this bus can go on the highway, and it did spectacular. So I have no doubt that the bus is fine, but I do want to stress how you should look into these things regardless. Next step would be to go to the tag office in whatever state you purchased the bus in. So I went to the New Jersey tag office. They had appointment only, and that kind of freaked me out for a minute because I was on a timeline and I really needed to get to North Carolina to get back home. So I waited in line regardless and thank God I was helped immediately. They were very accommodating to my situation and I was able to get the temporary tags literally probably within 30 minutes. 
Now we're completely legal, we have our bus, and we have 30 days to re-register it as either a commercial vehicle again or as an RV. If you have the skills to build it out in 30 days, do it. I would highly recommend it. I thought that I did, but being an amateur in this whole region, I definitely now see it as a joke to build it out in 30 days. If you're a professional carpenter or you know about buses, then definitely that's a realistic goal, but for me it wasn't. So I knew now that I had to call the state and figure out what I would at least need to meet the requirements to get it to an RV. But like I mentioned, each state is different. In Texas, you register your vehicle on that day and it lasts a whole year up to that day. In Georgia, it's on your birthday. So my birthday's in three months, meaning I have to re-register the vehicle in three months. At that time, the bus will be fully converted and I can then register it as a RV and get the RV title. Just to keep that in mind, you won't be able to do it right away in some states. After about a month, my insurance company was still a little lost as to what I was doing with my bus because I did tell them it was going to be converted. They were very confused and they asked for physical proof through pictures so I took photos of the bus without seats and it was already during the demolition phase so it was changing the color everything was different so I sent all those pictures in and then they told me unfortunately they could not insure the bus so they canceled my insurance and refunded me my money I then this part is very important got a different insurance company I went with progressive I called them after reading an article and told them the truth but not the full truth. So I let them know this is a bus, it is a commercial vehicle, it is registered as a commercial vehicle, it does not have seats inside, and I'm using it as a storage unit for wood and building tools, which is not a lie. Let's recap, just to go over the basics, what you're gonna need is your insurance first, your temporary tag in the state where you purchased the bus, and then when your 30 days is over, register the bus as a commercial vehicle or as an RV if it's already converted. So that's about it guys, super simple. I just really wanted to give you this knowledge so when you're going through this experience, it's not as stressful, it's more enjoyable and more fun. That's what it should be, you're buying your home. This should be a good time. So I really hope that you got something from this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask and don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. I will be getting back to you as soon as I can. Again, I really appreciate your support and just your viewing. Thanks for laying some eyes on me for a little bit. I hope you have an exceptional rest of your day and we'll catch you next time on Build the Bus Nation. Bye guys. Oh my gosh, this is my baby. It's perfect. Perfect short bus here. Ooh, he's bringing my baby. Jessica made it. It is like 3 a.m. in the morning, probably like closer to 3.30 in the morning. And here she is with her bus <laughs> all the way from New Jersey to North Carolina. She is here. This is so cute. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Say hi, Jess. Hello. Welcome to my home. What? Isn't oh awesome? my goodness. <laughs>